What is up, everybody? It's Phil here for the WCSL Season 3 Team Breakdown. I am joined by Elm. Hey. And Oryx. Hello. We're going to be going through each of the teams one by one, basically just going over our thoughts for them. We'll be doing them in the order that people signed up for the league, because that's just how everything is ordered in my head. So these aren't necessarily going to be in the order that people drafted in. First team up is actually my team, Lily Coves Fields. I did just make two changes like last minute after the draft, picking up Raichu and Kursala. And I'm really excited for my team now that I have those two. What do you guys think about my team? I'll let you guys go first. Well, I'm just going to start by making note of the fact that Incineroar was, what, the sixth pick of the draft? The fifth pick of the draft? Yeah, that's sixth. kind of wild. I thought Incineroar was going to go right away. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My, my assumption was in the first three. Like, I figured the first three picks would be Incineroar, Rillaboom, and then somebody who didn't pick one of those two. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely working under the assumption that Incineroar would get picked early, and when it didn't, it kind of was a surprise how long it went without getting picked. You were, yeah. you were sixth pick, right? Yeah, I was sixth pick, and I was planning on first picking Arcanine. So, like, I was expecting to pick a Fire-type Intimidator. I was just expecting it to be an A tier and not an S tier. But Incineroar is too good to pass up. Especially in Draft League, it just gets so many good support options. The Assault Vest set is good. Any sets with berries are good. It can be run in Trick Room. It can be run out of Trick Room. You can run it offensively a lot more easily than you can in actual ladder play or tournament play. Can I talk about my notes now? That's what I wrote, and I did two little things. First one is a Pokemon Spotlight. Pokemon that I like to talk about. In this case, it's Corviknight. Steel Flying, phenomenal typing. Provides amazing Tailwind support. Arguably the best uh, bulky Tailwind user in the league, since we don't have, like, Suicune and stuff. Yeah. Your body just uh, does... It, I mean, it turns it into, like, a soft and sin counter body press and stuff, which is crazy to think mm. about sometimes. But it beats Incineroar, it's beating other uh, Intimidate users too, so... Yeah, yeah, with the Mirror Armor, and then I also have Defiant on Phalanx. So Intimidate is just a hard sell against my team, which is really nice. So as the resident low-tier expert, I feel like I should chime in at this point on some of the B, C, and D tiers that really interest me on this team. Mm -hmm. uh, Tangrowth, for one, is really good redirection. It gets sleep powder support as well, so that's something that is really strong in this kind of start of the lower tiers. Morgren is fantastic with Prankster. It's destroyed several teams before. With Eviolite, it's very bulky. It's hard to get rid of. Cursal a great last-minute addition, really. This entire C tier is just super strong. Cursal has out of outside, off-the-charts special attack and really good special defense as well. When you take Barrascuta, for example, Barrascuta is just really powerful. It's the fastest thing in the tier list outside of Ninjask, which is Ninjask. So does it at speed Dragapult? Yeah. It does by one point. Yep. That's wow, that's actually kinda of crazy. Yeah. That yeah. and then you get Propeller yeah. Tail or Swift Swim. Or Swift, Swift Swim does. is not going to be used on this team. Well, it might not be used on this team. Can run Rain Dance right you? I can't do that. I, the thing is, is be surprised if the Heum gets Rain Dance either. Uh, I that? believe it does. Uh, the big thing is that Morgrim doesn't. Yeah, so. Morgrim doesn't get yeah. any Prankster weather. That's its big downfall as it's as a Prankster support bond. It doesn't get weather control at all. Yeah. Morgrim gets basically everything Grimmsnarl gets, except it doesn't have as good of an attack stat. That's the difference. Yeah. Well, I mean, that makes it pretty phenomenal C tier. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited to have it. In the D tier, things to look out for, naturally, Soul is a Shell Smasher. It, it gets strong Shell Smash and Rock Slide and X Scissor, and it'll, it will wreck teams after a Shell Smash gets up, mm -hmm. uh, if it has the proper support with Redirection involved. Behem, not the strongest typical Trick Room setup, but... It will work as a Trick Room setup or even a Trick Room counter because it does get in prison. And, of course, Phalanx is good for Defiant. It's going to be really strong once it sets up a uh, no retreat. There's not really much else to say. It's a strong fighting type. The next team up we have is uh, the Mexico Marowachis. Yeah, this is the Dragapult team. The Dragapult team. 
Yeah, that <laughs> certainly is a team that has Dragapult on it. I think yeah, Dragapult is probably... If I had to do how powerful I think each mod is, I think it's Incineroar, Rillaboom, Dragapult. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, that's a very fair assumption. Dragapult is very strong, simply for the fact that it can work with so many sets. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that this team has going for. It's got redirection on Clefairy, you got Prankster support from Sableye, which does get the weather moves, although other than rain for, like, Araquanid, I don't really see much of a reason to need so weather. One for Volcarona, Quibbernet. Yeah, that also that might works. Be fun. Like, I expect weather to be brought on Sableye whenever this team's going up against a weather team as a way to, like, try to counter. Yeah, probably. The biggest thing with this team is the type weaknesses to it. Yeah. Yeah, Having just, like, Flying five, Rock and five, Fire. Is not exactly the strongest uh, way to move forward. There's got to be something that they find to counter that counteract that weakness, especially when they go up against a strong flying type. Oh, definitely. Yeah, fortunately... Flying type weakness is huge. Fortunately for them, though, if you're going to have five weaknesses and zero resistances to a type, flying is probably the type I would choose because we're not in a Dynamax format, and flying type coverage sucks almost universally. But yeah, against a good Fair. flying type, it's going to be rough. I will say, against a uh, rock and fire type, I think a Raquinid will do an amazing job. Raquinid is just a phenomenal mon all around. Yeah. The wide guard support doesn't matter as much without restricteds, but it's still, water bubble just hits so hard. Yeah. It can get really powerful. Thing that really speak to me in the lower tiers, Belmise jumps out at me. It has a really strong base attack. Sceptile isn't as strong. I wish it were, uh, and I also wish it got coverage, but it does get to be really, really fast if it can get Unburden off. Yeah, I was thinking, there are like two main flaws in this team, I feel. Sceptile doesn't really have a good Unburden mod to pair up with. No Indeedee on this team or anything, so that might be difficult. And I also feel like Slowking definitely is not the best Trick Room setter. You definitely have some very strong Trick Room Sweepers on this team with Arachnid and Delmise, mm -hmm. but I just feel like Slow King won't be the most difficult thing to shut down. Yeah, I almost feel like if I were to make changes to this team, I would drop Slow King for Pinchurchin and then drop one of the D tiers for a different Trick Room setter. Yeah, the problem is it's hard to find another good Trick Room setter in the D tier. There are a lot of Trick Room setters in the yep. lower tier. Like, it, you you look at it and you're like, half of these mods set trick room, what are they doing here? I think Slowking is a good choice in that regard, because it can be a bit easier to stop in setting up trick room, but with follow me support from Pofable, it becomes a decent bit easier, mm -hmm. and it can also be pretty hard offensively once it gets in trick room. It also has some really strong support moves with stuff like Yawn. So let's move on to the 01 Boldor. This is Pineapple's team. This is the team that has the best Follow Me user in a format with way fewer good steel types. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be strong. A lot, a lot less good electric types, too. Oh, God, yeah. This team is, on average, pretty fast. This team, I feel like, is going to have some trouble with Trick Room strategies just because... Base 70 is its slowest Pokemon, so a lot of yeah. a lot of teams in Trick Room just kind of get a free pass. This cool. team has to be careful about making sure Trick Room doesn't get up, because once yes, Trick definitely. Room is up, it's going to be hard for them. And in fact, Espeon does not get imprisoned. Oh, it doesn't. Doesn't? Oh, this team is going to struggle. Ellen's <laughs> slowest mod is Bisharp at base 70. It's really not horrible, but it needs to find a really good Trick Room counter to really find a lot of success this team does. Yeah, because I don't knowing... think this team can really wait out a Trick Room either. Like, I don't think it has the bulky support options to just wait it out. I mean, Quillfish with its Intimidate can help with that, and it's not exactly the least bulky Pokemon. That's fair. But this team, they don't have Imprison Trick Room, and they don't even have Fake Out. Bless they choice. Are... Oh, they got, Blastoise. Yeah, they got Blastoise fake out. I mean, I, it's an option. I don't know how good of an option. But it's yeah, better. the problem is that... They need to find ways to play around Trick Room. And if they can't, they're going to need to run Iron Bull basically every week. We'll say uh, very strong core right off the bat with Tokyo Blastoise. 
Yeah. So tell me Shell Smash, that's just going to be wild. Of course, the best way to beat it is going to be like Discharge. Yeah, that's also kind of what I was worried about. One way to get through Trick Room is to like cycle fake outs and intimidates. And the fact that Blastoise and Quellfish are both weak to electric types is just going to make it hard to yeah. do that. Definitely doesn't have the best electric matchup. If I know Colin, and I know Colin, he's going to have some crazy like anti Trick Room strat with like Rebombi or something, and everybody's going to be like, what the? Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just speed swapping onto the trick room setter is an option oh. for this team, and it's not even a bad one. If you can uh, speed oh, yeah. onto the trick room sweeper with a bobby, then all of a sudden you're a bobby. Oh my god! Well, if he if he runs speed swap or bobby and speed swap Espeon next to each other, okay, I want to move on. I don't want to think about this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> next team up is the Lynchburg Littons. This is the Sun team. There's always a this sun, team, the sun team, and this is the sun team. You got <laughs> Torkoal, Venusaur, Charizard right in a row on the top there. Umbreon and Maractus, two other very strong sun abusers. How does Umbreon abuse the sun again? Moonlight. So you basically heal up like a crazy amount of health with Moonlight. Yep. Yeah, that is true. I will say Jolteon's also a pretty decent Pokemon with weather because weather ball is a good move and if your opponent's running counter weather weather ball is still a good move yeah definitely yeah this team also does a very good job on its speed stats yeah, lowest very, 20 very highest 130 variety. I think the biggest problem the highest 130 is kind of a lie though because their highest is Venusaur yeah no that's fair oh. I'm just saying so even faster than that and there's not much that Anybody can do to outspeed them if they, they have weather control. Yeah, you have like Venusaur, which is 200, and then 130, 100, 100, 80, 80, 65, 60, 50, 30, 20. I will say one thing I always love to talk about is how inconsistent Charizard is. It's a lot easier to just have rock type coverage when you're up against Charizard. Yeah, so I, feel I, like... I genuinely don't know how much Charizard will be used on this team. You just, if you're. I mean... If you're bringing Charizard, you have to make sure that it is always surviving rock slides with the teammate next to it. If it's getting it's one difficult. shot by, it's a lot easier in non-Dynamax because you don't have access to max rockfall. But it's also much harder in Dynamax because you don't have access to double the HP. Yeah, so you just have to make sure you're living rock slides. It, yeah, I don't know. You're going to have to run Charty Berry like, That's the biggest problem. every week. This is why it's B-tier. This is why I was really like trying to get him B-tier when we were making this. Kind of want to talk about Dragonite though. Very Dragonite's neat fun. Yeah. Yeah. Multi scale and inner focus, two very good abilities. Gets dual wing beat now, which isn't a great move, but like better than no flying coverage at all. My but... interesting pick of the C and D tier for this team, it's probably Runerigus for the C tier. That's fun. It's... I love Runerigus. Yeah. Amazing. Hugely underrated trick room setter. Uh, Honestly, probably should have been B tier. Honestly, I I believe it should have been B tier. It's really strong. It has quite high base attack. I think some somewhere around 105 base attack, if mm -hmm. my memory is correct. Good typing in go in Ghost Ground. Gets strong earthquake. Gets poltergeist. Gets a lot of good. Uh, I think it uh, gets high horsepower, right? I don't think it does. It's not a horse. It's not a Hans either. Uh, but oh, but uh, Excadrill also has been a horse. Yeah, but it's a Hans. Uh, there's a difference. Sure. <laughs> uh, so, it the other thing it gets access to is Iron Defense Body Press. And with its base 30 speed tier, it can hit really hard. Uh, for the D tier, I have to say, it's kind of a bit of a toss-up between, I think that's Galarian Mr. Mime, and that's yeah. not Mr. Mime. Yeah, that's Galarian uh, Mr. Mime. That one is, with Eviolite filter it, Green it, cleaner. Can, it can really get bulkier than you expect mm -hmm. uh, from a D tier and it's got its own screens which is also nice for bulk and then other than that Agron is very powerful uh, and has like base 1 AP defense so watch out for that and sturdy but don't forget that uh, Mr. Mime has screen cleaner too just means when it comes out on the field all screens are wiped Next up, we got the Rustburg Riolus. This team... This is another fast team. Interesting. I yeah, struggled this... with finding synergies here. 
Yeah, yeah, it's mostly it's, just set up Tailwind and hope things work out. Yeah, you always have in prison trick room stuff on Chandelier. But with that, it works a lot of times. What, like Specs or Scarf. There are a lot of I Pokemon mean, here that want to be holding choice items. Like, I yeah. can yeah. Like, on the two thirds of this team uh, and feel happy about it. So they're going to struggle a little bit to find good items. I think this team is also again going to struggle against Trick Room. Mm-hmm. I I disagree. I think it'll do. I think this team has a lot better options into Trick Room. First of all, oh, I, w- I was just about to say that. Type. Yeah, they have really strong Rust and Dark types and Crocodile and the highest special attack of any non-legend Pokemon, Chandelure. With Ghost and Dark types, the reason they're so good against Trick Room is because ninety percent of Trick Room setters are psychic types or ghost types. Mm-hmm. So having a few good, exceptions. Yeah, good, strong ghost and dark types is really good against that. Additionally, they have Taunt on Linzakot, they have Imprison Trick Room on Chandelure, and they have a lot of other options. Yeah, this Just, is this is the yeah, team where you need to bring they, your mental all art. All in all, I think this team's matchup into Trick Room is a lot stronger than the last one we were worried about. Mm-hmm. Still, they do yeah. want to get make sure the trick room does not get up. Yeah, base sixty five is just really fast for your slowest Pokemon. Well, I do want to talk about that crocodile real quick, though. Very interesting Pokemon. Uh, it, it's it's pretty frail, but with stuff like assault vest or a choice item, can be much better, hit much harder, much bulkier. Also mm-hmm. gets intimidate and moxie, along with a lot of other intimidator and moxie users. It's just very good that you can run either. Then it has a surprisingly flexible move pool. A lot of yeah. different options. You're only going to see physical sets, but there's a lot of different moves you can choose from. What kind of low tier lookouts for this team? Noivern is surprisingly strong if you don't mm-hmm. expect it. Definitely. But it also gets Tailwind support as a secondary to Whimsicott, and it gets a lot of great coverage moves. In the yeah. D tier, you always have to look out for Swoobat. If you are not prepared for Swoobat, you will get swept by Swoobat. What does Swoobat so, do? Uh, it's simple. Simple beam. Ah. It's it gets the ability simple. It can be you can have something like Fling Hitmonchan with weakness policy, Swoobat, uh, and like a Salak Fling Salak Berry. Oh, uh, okay. You can have just a nasty plot set that gets plus four in one move. Yeah, you definitely They're, want to be careful. Yeah, you you have to look out for it. Up next, we have the Philadelphia Rillabooms, which is Elm's team. This team has uh, double Intimidate and actually has a very good Intimidate cycle between Gyarados and Toracat because there isn't any type overlap except for, I guess, rock types hit both. Toracat is really, really interesting. I, I honestly feel like it could have been an A tier. Yeah, I had zero plan coming into this draft. All I knew is I wanted to use Gyarados Toracat. That's a reasonable plan. Yeah. The other thing I want to point out with uh, this team is Mimikyu is busted. Uh, Mimikyu uh, is so uh, good. Timmy Slapper. That Mimikyu is not the busted form, I'm sorry. Oh, right, yeah, wrong form. You you got the wrong Mimikyu form. It's only busted if it takes an attack. But Mimikyu is clearly not. <laughs> so, yeah, so far we haven't done it, it. We we haven't even made it to first week yet. So yeah, it's not busted. Sorry. <laughs> you want to leave this one, okay, it is broken. In the game. <laughs> so on a more serious note, actually Mimikyu is actually very very strong. It's very hard to stop it from getting Trick Room up if, if it wants Trick Room up, and on this team it usually will. Based on the speed tiers. It's kind of it's... crazy that my Trick Room setter is my fastest mod. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah honestly, I th- I think the biggest thing this team is missing is a base 110 to 130 speed Pokemon. Now, you say that one of my highlights for the D tier is Ice Q, because it is a base 130 mod. Oh it's yeah, it just, just needs to get hit by a physical noise. attack. The problem with it is I don't see any anything like side mock punch for it, which would be really helpful on this team. Of course, my C tier pick to look out for 
I've used it in the past. It's super powerful. I have to go with Vikavolt. Slowest Pokemon on this team. It can run items to make it even slower, of course. It can also just run the choice specs and destroy your entire team. Yeah. Uh, D tier spotlight. I don't know how in the world this got by the committee. Dunsparce is literally the most powerful Pokemon on this entire tier list. How did it get in D tier? I'm sorry. It's well, it's just super powerful. Well, that's how powerful it is. It was so powerful that it overrode it the committee. Overrode the system. Yeah. <laughs> it just it, broke the system. Yeah. It no, took it, down the government. It was so a. The I suppose. Yeah. It was an overflow it, error. Yeah. It was so high that it overflowed back down to zero. Next up, we got the Drifil Drillbur, which is a team that has its mascot. Love oh, true. Or the evolution of it. Oh, yeah, I guess so. The evolution. I mean, we always love those mascot picks. Yep. Yeah. This is one of the Sand teams. One of the teams got Tyranitar. Tyranitar and Ethereal are two very different things. Yeah. I did not. I did not highlight their sand. I, I highlighted this team's sand just because I think it has a stronger sand core. But yeah, there is another team with sand. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the, really, the only thing that Gigalith doesn't do that, like Gigalith, is much slower than Tyranitar and doesn't quite have the same total base stats as Tyranitar. But it does a very good Tyranitar right. impersonation, especially given its Easily. tiers lower. And Gigalith being slow is actually really helpful in Trick Room or against Trick Room. I don't think this team has any setters other than maybe Meowstic. Wait, Mr. Mime says Trick Room. Yeah. Competitive is good. This team is weird otherwise that... quite weak to Intimidate, but they have double competitive, which is kind of strong. Yeah. yeah. And I, it's, a, it's a weird pick, in my opinion. I feel like... I don't know. I just feel like Any... having double competitive is odd. The other thing it gives this team, just for a note, is Fake Out. Because Meowstic gets Fake Out. We'll say Mr. Mime is also a Psychic-type Fake Out user, though? I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with having double Fake Out. I think, like, 90% of VGC teams are running double Fake Out. Yeah. And it's super strong with no max, so. Yeah, I will say I love these A tiers as they aren't abusing the sand themselves, but they are great support options for this uh, sand team. As we mentioned, Milotic has uh, competitive, which is great for Skidrill, Kikonda, Giggle, and Stoutland, all physical attackers. Then having a dragon flying type is just great uh, coverage for the sand team. I'm also Here. intimidated. It is good. Moxie from it is good. It's mm -hmm. everything. The highlight from the C tier, because I've already kind of gone over the D tier, is going to be Rodon Fan. I mean, I'm just a big fan. <laughs> yeah. You only said that because you wanted to make that pun, but I'm pretty no, sure Stoutland it's, it's, is it's, actually it's, going to be very good on this team. Yeah. I feel like Stoutland I, and Skull are much more tier. interesting C tiers. <laughs> nasty, it gets nasty fun, of course, like all Rotons do. Uh, it's the, it's considered Rotom as the most offensively oriented of all of the forms. I mean, you just nasty pot and air slash and destroy things. It's yep. Not much else to say. Uh, it's not quite as good outside of Max, but still quite decent. Next up, we got the Victoria Bells. This is Oryx team. Yes, it is. First, would you like to elaborate? I I hate so. this team. This team has so many of my favorite <laughs> Pokemon on it. This team, the has... this team has had your favorite Pokemon is because I was helping you in draft last season, and I just like all of the same Pokemon that you like. So yeah, I feel like I'll just let you guys argue about this one. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's good. So Dracovish is a Dracovish. I think we can agree on that. Oh, Dracovish, oh, absolutely amazing Pokemon. Yeah. I mean, it can run Choice Scarf, it can run Choice Band, what can you say? It can run Fish's Rend, it doesn't really have to run anything. Uh, Clefairy, I've finally managed to have a team in draft that has redirection. This is a big <laughs> first is. for me. I've done seven drafts before, this is my first with the redirector. They're, they're rare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, Weavile is just fast and strong, not much to say. 
base 125, base 120. Scrafty is Intimidate Fake Out. Uh, Duraludon is a strong steel type. It's strong. With an Assault Vest, it's bulky. Yeah. I will say, I completely neglected Duraludon when I was looking through all of these obvious synergies. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. there's <laughs> so much else you could probably... I was like, Surfer Crop Raja. Great. And then... Yeah. I'm now we'll looking at it. Duraludon. I did this in like a half hour. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But I also but... want to point out the the Boltund and the uh, Aromatissi in the C tier. Those two are both going to pull a lot of weight. Yeah. I, always, I try to always draft C and D tiers that will pull their weight more than people expect. Aromatisse is one of those mods that you're like, why would I use Aromatisse? Aromatisse is just a trick room center and it doesn't get much support and it doesn't survive anything. And then you actually look at it and you start running calcs. And you're it like, actually... man, this thing is surviving every hit, even super effective ones. And then it also gets like a billion support moves and I can't for this thing. What the yeah, heck? I have I have run like of all the Pokemon I've had in Draft League, I might have run the most different moves on Aromatissi. Like other than Bolton. <laughs> yeah, Bolton another one. It it runs everything. It can be competitive with special attacks against Intimidate, which my team is a little bit weak to on the top end. Mm -hmm. It can just run fast support with Nuzzle and Snarl. It can run all sorts of stuff. Draw and draw Fire Fang is an option against things, uh, funnily enough. I will say the biggest disappointment for Boltund on this team is you don't have any ground types to take advantage of Electrify with. Yeah, that's one bit of a weakness of this team. I don't have a ground type. I also have six fighting, but that's a, that's a completely separate issue. Yeah, but uh, the the six fighting res, uh, weaknesses is a little bit helped out by the fact that you have two fairy types. Yeah, that are both also going to be good support options. Yeah, and trigger yeah, fish. I also have a fish. Chaparaja uh, is just my baby. I I draft it every single league that I can. I Who doesn't like a good Chaparaja pick. Chaparaja is super strong. It's super slow. It's base thirty. Sheer Force, Life Orb, it gets so many good Sheer Force moves. It gets Iron Head, Rock Slide, Play Rock, just to name a few. Those are my three favorites. It also gets, and this is something that I will be running because it is also super strong. In No Dynamax, it gets Heavy Metal. With Heavy Metal, this thing weighs 1,700 kilograms, which is enough to hit things like Hip Howdon for base 120 power with Heavy Crab, Heavy Slam and Heat Crash. It's wild. Oh, yeah. It will hit 99% of the format for 120 base power with its heavy slap heat crash. Uh, what the hell is this thing? It's named Chillabelle. Top of the DJ. Chinchino. I mean, skill link, right flex, uh, tail slap, all, all Easily won. It gets all of the skill link moves, and then you just give it a king, so you're not going to go burn. Uh, Does it get. Yeah. Um... Everything Dragon. except Magical Sphere. It gets Rock Blast, it gets Bullet Seed, it gets Tail Slap. It's Triple Axle if you want to run that. <laughs> they get the Dragon one? What's it called? Uh, scale Shot? No. Not quite that crazy. Yeah. Uh, scale Shot would be fun. Scale well, Shot? Wild if you thought you know, Scale Shot. I'm just imagining. Hilarious. Too bad it has it fur and shot. not scales. <laughs> So these last two picks are my sleepers of the draft. Berserker is Steely Spirit. It makes Duraludon and Kaparaja. For two examples, by the way, I have plans with this team that you wouldn't like to see. Or rather, that you would love to see, but I will I will show you in, in good time. Next up, we've right got now. the Edinburgh and Polyons. Now, this is the other Sun team and the other Sun team. <laughs> it is both at the same time. It's two for one. Sadly, it has some of the weaker sun and sand mods. Yeah, it's more Pretty of like sand core than sun, but it's more of like it has the options for them, but the team is less built around them. Especially when you consider yeah. you have Indeedy Mail and Talonflame for very good support options. Well, Indeedy Mail more for offense. Yeah. Well, Indeedy Mail also gets stuff like Imprisoned Trick Room. Yeah. And it can't be big hand. Faked can out. always run fake out with inner focus. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get that. I, when I had a DD mail for 
season one of this draft, I ran Inner Focus Fake Out one week. It's also that was funny. just nice when you have Ndidi to have the option to run a Psychic Seed on Pokemon that you don't want to run uh, Assault Vest on. Yeah. Saying, I didn't put this in obvious uh, synergies, because I don't think it's the most obvious, but I think there is a bit of Psychic Spam on this team. Yeah? Yeah, there is. Starmie gets Expanding Force, so... Yeah, this is another yeah. team that is pretty fast, uh, which will be a little awkward against other Trick Room teams, but Indeedy Mail goes such a long way towards helping against the Trick Room matchup. I mean, we just literally talked about what notes I have right now. Indeedy Mail is great, so I don't. I, that's my job done. <laughs> yeah. So, C and D tier picks for me for this team. Zoroark is the scariest Pokemon in any format that it's allowed in. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree. I hate Zoroark. I hate that thing. Not that it's super strong. It, it has almost no bulk, unfortunately, for it. Like, if you look at its stats, it's base 105 speed, base 120 special attack, and with its ability, I have no idea how it got into the C tier. That was an absolute steal from this team. Love that pick for them. Sucks. Especially, they have so many good things to disguise as. Like, disguising as it is super strong for them. If they want to, like, bluff a fake out in a focus mm-hmm. set. Mm-hmm. Toxic Croak is my D tier pick. Dry skin or poison touch or whatever it, is, it gets, it can run. It's more powerful than people expect. It gets sucker punch. It's just really a, an underrated Pokemon. Yeah, when the coverage is good, like when fighting and poison are both good into your opponent's team, it's going to do a lot of work. Yeah, and it's really good in Tailwind as well. It yeah. really helps stuff. Yeah. Is is definitely one of the few teams with like really good tailwind. Next up, we got the Michigan Wall Reigns. I want to I want to just start out with uh, Miss Spellers, amazing player, Unburden, uh, scary. Yeah, like you've noted the grassy terrain Unburden uh, as an obvious synergy, while well, completely skipping over the fact that Comfey Holucha is kind of scary. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, weakness policy. I, I mean, I just I, ju- I mean, yeah, Holucha's frail though. Yeah, it's the problem. Not, yeah. That's, that's not the a funky Pokemon. Yeah. And that's a, that's a bit of a problem with several Pokemon on this team in the higher tiers, but made up for quite a bit by the Intimidate support and style support from Arcanine. Yeah. It completely missed the Unburdened Slurpuff, too. Thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the multiple Unburdened Mon. Scary. Yeah, this is uh, the team, like, of all the teams... I think this team cannot go without its S tier. Yeah, I, will say, I, I agree with that. Uh, yeah, Rillaboom is phenomenal. Not because the rest of the team is super weak, but because Rillaboom is super strong. Yeah, like and a it lot just of supports this team so well. Yeah, that that's the thing is it supports the team so well. It is sadly like the bulkiest Pokemon on the team, like in Kangaskhan, which is not that bulky. Yeah, but I guess floor healing does help. Personally, I will. I do also. I do want to talk about Kangaskhan. I, I mean, if you guys want to say anything else, I mean, Oryx might actually want to talk about Kangaskhan. I mean, uh, I, I, I don't want to talk about Kangaskhan. I want to talk about Pokemon. Kangaskhan has. Okay, then I'll talk about Kangaskhan real quick. Can I just start with fake out Scrappy beats every trick room? Uh, does no, not no. be not every, but it's gonna be beating Mimikyu. Yeah, I, I don't like this one. <laughs> It does not it beat does, it indeed. Yeah, it doesn't beat Ndidi, but yeah, it beats everything else. I don't like Genghis Khan. Beats my team. Okay, or I'll let you talk about your C tier pick now. Turtonator. Uh I love that mod. It's great if it can get Trick Room. And that is the problem with this team. Their Trick Room setter is Comfey, and I think maybe Jinx gets it, but I'm not even certain about that. Not exactly the most bulky Trick Room setters. Yeah. Uh, it, and the team is also very fast aside from Terminator, so Trick Room is something to look out for. Yeah, it's for more them. here as like an anti-Trick Room Pokemon. Yeah, it definitely would agree with that. But it, it would struggle against the slower Pokemon without something like an Iron Bolt to help it under speed. It, it's just super strong other than that. And Shell Trap is scary sometimes. In the yeah. D tier... Probably my pick 
might surprise people, it's Skunte. It gets what? Strong... <laughs> I uh, have the same it... reaction as Alm. <laughs> it's Poison Dark type. It's stronger than you might think, and it's actually decent support against Snarl, which is something that not a lot of people would know, although I think people would expect it. It's like, huh, it does get Snarl. So There goes all the misspellers planned. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's an interesting Pokemon to look for. Not necessarily the strongest. This B tier isn't the strongest B tier I've seen, but Scum Tank is something to be aware of. Yep. At the very least. Okay. Next up, we got the Brunswick Chat Shots. This team. Which, this team. <laughs> team is very interesting. This team is so bulky. This team just uh, is. Uh, we we've implemented the rule this season, uh, jokingly, that any timeout results in this team losing, regardless of whether this team participated in the match or not. It's it's just it's just such an odd team. Yeah, uh, I will say though, this team out of every team, so like this team has the weaknesses to ghosts, like it doesn't have any ghost resistances. Other than that. The, it's like impossible to hit multiple of these Pokemon for super effective with the same type. Like, I think at yeah. most it's like two or three Pokemon share a weakness. But then other Pokemon cover those weaknesses. Look at this team and I question what's going on. Yeah. This team is definitely a team that's looking to do a decent amount of stalling in yeah. these games. Mostly get two or like, three hit KOs and just stop the opponent from getting one hit KOs. This team has. Dustclops, Ferrothorn, Shuckle, Pukamuku, Wobbuffet, and I expect four of those Pokemon, or at least three of those Pokemon to come every week. For this team, my pick of the C tier has to be Luxray. Luxray is just good Intimidator, mm -hmm. and it's also legit somehow one of the strongest Pokemon on this team. Especially <laughs> if it can get gutted, it, it feels like the Pokemon that can actually threaten to sweep on this team more than almost anything else except maybe Sylveon, yeah. if it gets cut, cuts boosted. Yeah, I feel like and a lot of this can... team is going to be getting chip damage in with all of its stall Pokemon, and then finishing them off with Sylveon or Luxray. In the D tier, I have to say Wobbuffet. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing else to say. Puka Muka and Shuckle uh, are like always a bit scary, but Wobbuffet is the one that can ruin your day. Wobbuffet has all my friends are dead syndrome, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a problem, but, I mean, it has Shadow Town. If this team had any ally switch other than Dustclops and Yostick, it would be even more scary. But even with only that, it's still scary. <laughs> hmm. Like, being trapped in with Wobbuffet and having to face a 50-50 of ally switch any given turn is always a nightmare. Next up, we got the Dune Do Dittos. Speaking of Shadow Tag. Yeah, this is another Shadow Tag team. I feel like this team doesn't have enough damage output. I'm going to be honest. This is where Ditto comes in. <laughs> yeah, see, I just don't think Ditto's that exciting. Uh, you're not realizing if, if, you, if you think this team doesn't have much damage output is you're not looking at Aegislash Sword for attack and special attack. Oh, that's fair. One. That's fair. So, Aegislash Sword is actually powerful, as opposed to Aegislash Shield, which doesn't attack, so it doesn't matter. Garchomp can Scale Shot, it can Sword Stance, uh, Rotom can Nasty Plot. Yeah, uh, when I was Dread saying Pod, there wasn't much damage output, I was more saying, like, the damage output is coming from three Pokemon, but you're right, I was forgetting about Aegislash. Uh, I will say, I think it was Darky uh, convinced me on Ditto. Balthatel is a very low damage output mon. Ditto just kind of helps that by letting you posture another, maybe more damaging Pokemon. That's fair. C tier pick is Togetic. Togetic is Togekiss, but smaller. Also doesn't get quite as many good moves, but still follow me Pokemon. You get Air Slash for some reason. That's so stupid. Yeah. It's not as powerful, doesn't have as good support, but it's still... Decent for follow me support at the very least, and this team definitely wants follow me support with its setup mods in the A tier and in, even with B tier Sword Sands, Aegis Slash, probably. D tier, again, Ditto is strong, but I'd say 
you always have to watch out for Shedinja in some form because Shedinja is always a link con. Yeah, I just think it's Definitely. in draft league. It's just so easy to just have a coverage move for Shedinja on all your Pokemon. Yeah, but the thing about Shedinja is it forces you to run that coverage move on all yeah, of your Pokemon. It's, it's, a, it's a team building tax Which... whether it comes or not. Moving on, we got the Guadalajara Gibbles. Greens. Yeah, I mean, this is the team with Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl is very good. I mean, you, wow, well, you have double. It's well, also kind of low in Nine Tails for more screen. Yeah, this this <laughs> is the team you're bringing Psychic Fangs and Brick Break against 100% of the time. Yeah. You know? It's kind of weird. I didn't. I didn't even notice that it. Uh, the Grim Snarl plus Nine Tails pick is kind of odd. Yeah, it's kind of redundant. Galarian Weezen also isn't a lot of damage output. Like your your S and A tiers are kind of low on damage. I mean, I think Stony J makes up for it, but powers up all your partner's moves. I don't think it powers up its own moves. It does not. Yeah, I didn't think so. But it's a neat mon. Yeah, both your physical and special moves will be stronger. I think Stony J itself is a bit bare bones, but its ability makes up for that fact. Solid C tier pick. Yeah, I think I think also I want to point out steel weakness on this team. Its S and A tiers are all weak to steel type moves because they're all fairy types. Yeah. Too bad. I mean, luckily there aren't many good steel types. Yeah, but Iron Head slash Iron Tail is pretty common coverage. <sighs> So yeah. something that I want to point out, just as a synergy that might go unnoticed, Cotney Lucario, Cotney still gets beat up. Oh, it does. Yeah. Okay. The problem is, so it's just not that. Cotney is slow, and Lucario is frail. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but beat up from Cotney is still doing zero damage to Lucario because it's a Cotney. That's fair, but. So, I think it's, it's going to be, be hard to, to set up. At all. Yeah. yeah. My highlight yeah. picks, of course, Cotney. Cotney is it's whimsicott, but significantly worse. It doesn't get Tailwind, but it does get Cotton Spore, mm -hmm. which is basically Tailwind, except that it resets when you switch out. Yeah, it's a uh, Tailwind that doesn't go away in four turns, but it gets reset when you switch out. It's defiant and competitive and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. It's, it's worse Tailwind. Uh, it is much worse Tailwind. <laughs> it, it gets Charm. I don't remember what else it gets, but it's it's something to be on the lookout for. And again, beat up with Lucario is a possibility if it wants to be, like, stupid Choice Scarf. I mean, the D tiers, I'm going to have to go with Claydol here. Levitate is just a good ability in mm -hmm. general. It's relatively bulky, it, and it can set Trick Room for something like Mudsdale, which, again... Beat up Cottony with Mudsdale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Slightly better. Cottony, Cottony. <laughs> it is a thing you can do. For with a beat up because it can beat up two different things on this team, and nothing it's else. Only can. an option. The the point is that it is an option, and it's definitely something that this team had in mind in draft. Otherwise, they wouldn't draft two possible things to be beat up with Cottony. Yeah. Team is very early 2020 vibes. Yes. Yeah. But again, early 2020 was a difficult format to figure out. And draft is always difficult to figure out. So this maybe is, this, this isn't that's... even early. This is day one 2020 vibes. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure all these folks, no, uh, Clots are didn't exist. Well, all of them. It, I mean, or Ninetales. Cario, yeah. Cario, no, yeah, Nine Tales Grimstarl, We're all very, very common on. They won 2020 teams. No, I'm interested to see what this team does. Next up, we got the Aura Tails. Um, they also made a recent waiver, right? Yeah. They dropped Slowbro for um, Leafeon, and then they dropped uh, D tier for Vulpix. This is a very interesting Suncore that was made after I wrote down my notes. Yeah. <laughs> Warpart is a notable Pokemon on this team for me. Yeah, I wrote it down. I know you like talking about it. I know you just dropped a whole bunch of sets for me to use last season. I, I literally I you, dropped but... like 14 sets for you to use, yeah. Uh, there was a lot. <laughs> the reason I am able to drop these sets is because I have used every life on a set. Straight up. Every <laughs> he, has, <laughs> he has used and created every light part set. Yeah. I mean, I've gone into the rabbit hole of Prankster Double Team Substitute. Uh... 
<laughs> Believe me, I have tried every single set with this Pokemon. It's Prankster, it's powerful, and it gets all of the support options, literally every single one. Uh, Rain Dance, Sunny Day, it gets... Like everything except screens. Yeah. No it's the Prankster model that gets everything except screens, yeah, precisely. And Sandstorm, it doesn't get Sandstorm because no Prankster model gets Sandstorm. Tailwind. It, it all, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't quite get Tailwind. Option. But it does get Thunder Wave, it gets Screech and Fake Tears. It's just a damage multiplier or damage reducer depending on how you want to use it. Or annoying, stupid, double team, substitute baton pass into Chansey. This is another odd team. This team's crazy fast, and then there's Marowak. Marowak has, like, Trick Room from specifically a Lolan Not even a Lolan Executive, or just normal Executive. The awkward thing about Marowak when you're when you don't have slower Pokemon for Trick Room is you can't run Iron Ball on Marowak, or at least you shouldn't be. So it makes it yeah. awkward to use as a Trick Room counter. That being said, you have a decent amount of Trick Room counters. You have a bunch of Taunt Pokemon, and then you can always just like reverse a Trick Room the hard way. Yeah, I will say that going back to Marowak real quick, it is basically a free item slot. Yeah, it's never using the I item mean, from with, another Pokemon because yeah. it's always running Thick Club. I have to go with Aerodactyl as the CTO pick. It's fast against Tamlin, and it's it can be fairly strong. So it's something to be on the lookout for. If you you think you're going to outspeed, it can run Tailwind. In the D tier, Chansey. I hate the thing. It's way too bulky for its own good. Like, legitimately, it is too bulky for its own good. I ran in a free-for-all set. I... I had a Chansey. It had no setup. It literally was just like a soft-boiled thing. Uh, it At the end of the free-for-all, there was a plus three Rapidash on the field, and in the sun, Flame Charge did 33%. God. It's wild. Yeah. Uh, it's just bulkier than you expect. You really want to play around it, but then at the same time, you can't play around it because it minimizes, and then you die inside and outside. But mostly inside. I'm dead inside, because I've played against Chansey. Second to last team, we got the Hermit Crabs. I'm just going to get this out of the way. This is the Trick Room team. This is by far the slowest team in the entire draft. Yeah. Like, it's not even a question. It's not even close. Yeah. The fastest mine is base 85. Well, also, and then you have to get halfway eight. up to get over a base 40. Yeah, this seems super slow. I'm I'm interested to see how that plays out. Hatterene, indeed, he is just one of the hardest trick rooms to stop. Easily. So my picks of the C and D tier. C tier, I'm going to have to go with Profagrigus. I mean, I can't even call it a secondary trick room setter on this team because it's like the, the third, third trick room. <laughs> Still, it's a ghost type, which brings some things that uh, being a psychic type does not even with Indeedy. It also gets Iron Defense Body Press, which is mm -hmm. just super strong with base 145 defense stat. Uh, and it's just bulky. Uh, yeah. And so that's something to watch for. Uh, in the D tier, I'm going to have to go with whatever Crab Attack is called in English. Uh, it's the Crab one. <laughs> Crawdon? Uh, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the name. Yeah, call it Crab Attack? It's Krebuta in German. Okay. Krebuta. Oru uh, only knows German names. Yeah, it's no it's doubt. my it's my it's my thing. Uh, Krebuta is just it's strong. It, it's adaptability. It's it in your choice band with water gun. What what can I say? Uh, it, and then when it liquidates, it, it's kind of strong. You know, it's a strong Pokemon. Yeah. Can't say much else. Yeah. Last up, we got well, Valiant Volcaronas. This team is really well balanced, I feel. Uh, good, yeah. especially in the speed. If you look, like the two closest in speed, you get P2 and Primarino, which play differently sometimes. And then you get like difference of is a two or three here or there. And then everything is kind of spread out. And you get a good range of everything from 45 to 120. It's hard to prepare for in that regard. Yeah. I will say. There is like a maybe a bit less obvious, uh, there's a, a Paris trap going on here. Yeah, that is a little bit of something that's going on. 
So I, I wouldn't say it's particularly strong, but it's definitely something to watch out for. Yeah, it's not an option this team has. Yeah, this team also just has good individual attackers. Yeah. Basically anything on this team can do a decent chunk of damage. For certain. Yeah, let's talk about Salazzle real quick. I like this mod. <laughs> uh, it, it's a fast fake out user. Pros of gas, it's a fun ability or move. Yeah, Salazzle is also my pick of this C tier just because, again, it's super underrated Pokemon in support. It, But it can also hit hard, harder than you expect if you're not, if you're like, oh, Salazzle is a good support Pokemon. No, it also hits 111 base special attack and, like, you can flamethrower and take out a lot of weaknesses. You can, it gets. It doesn't get much coverage, but when its stabs are strong, it can do a lot of damage. Yeah. D tier pick, it has to be Trombork, uh, which is Trevenant in English, I think. Yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've draft of these, and I've also used it just on the ladder in like back in series three, before all the legends were here, which is, I think it's a really good mod. It gets Harvest, it also gets Frisk. It's a good Trick Room setter, but it, it can also sweep in Trick Room. Its base attack doesn't show up here, but it's in the 110s, uh, I want to say. Uh, it gets really good moves, especially with Poltergeist in the game. Yeah. That was a big buff for it. So, with it's, it's again, a secondary Trick Room option for this team, uh, which is really useful for a team that has a lot of base 70 or lower bombs. Do you guys have anything else you want to say? I am really excited for this season. I feel like there's a lot of good teams here. Yeah, uh, I agree. You know, it's going to be a great that. season. Uh, what team, off the top of your head, what team do you think is going to win? Like, what team do you think is going to do the best? Am I allowed to That's say my say. Yes, but you're kind no. of an ass if you do. <laughs> yeah. I probably would do. I have to say... Like, my sleeper picks to win the whole thing, it's got to be, like, the Driftvale Drill Birth. I was... Like, they're, they're I strong think, I think... not necessarily recognized, and they have a lot of other options as well. Yeah, I think their team I is very good. I think it's a good. very interesting team. It's probably one of my personal favorite teams in this draft. Um, I also think uh, the Philadelphia Rillabooms is a very solidly built team. Too kind. Yeah, that is a good it, team. The it, Rillabooms. It's colorful. I'll say that much. Obviously, I hate the Vic the Victoria Bells. They are my rival this league. Actually, now I need to check. Do I get yeah, to play against yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely fair. I, I drafted all of your favorites. You you can feel free to be mad at mad about it. We don't play. <laughs> we don't play. <laughs> Damn it! We'll have to meet in the playoffs. I'll see you in the playoffs. Meet. Yeah. Eight in finals. These are going to be the two final teams right here. <laughs> well, I sure hope so. Yeah. That. Oh, and it's funny. I'm the team with Raichu now, so I get to bring Raichu against oh. Bolton. <laughs> I get to bring Bolton into Raichu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trapped with you. You're trapped with me. <laughs> awesome. <He's excited. laughs> Well, that was the uh, WCSL uh, Season 3 team breakdown. Uh, let me know in the comments what team you think will win the league. And I'll try to do um, hey, probably not weekly recaps, him. but like every two weeks I'll probably do a week recap video. Forget to hit that bell. And only 1% of the people who watch this channel is subscribed. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't think that's true. Given I have like ten subscribers, <laughs> I don't think I have thousands of views per video. <laughs> don't forget to kick that subscribe button and lick the bell. Um. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Everybody have a good one. Uh, I'll see you next video. Sure.